You got that one off, Grandpa? Okay. You got a bunch of rookies going. Got a bunch bunch of rookies kind of running things here this morning. Got Grandpa behind the sound booth. Or as the name that I think has kind of stuck over the last week, uh, DJ Grandpa Smooth Top, g Smooth Top. He's given it his best behind the booth, and we thank him for stepping up in place of Caleb. And they say a third time's a charm. I don't know about that. We're going to see, though. i got to tell you, Kevin's OCD and kind of how he has to plan everything out, he let me know that this was coming way back in March. I didn't have that much time to prepare in the previous two messages, and I think uh, extra time is not necessarily a good thing. Because <laughs> I've been thinking about it all spring and all summer long, um, just what it is that the Lord would want me to talk about, and, and I, I don't want it to be me, as Kevin often says. I don't want it to be my words. I want it to be the Lord's leading here, and... and I don't know. I wouldn't say that I've necessarily been struggling with it, but I think he's kind of put a little bit of a different type of message on my heart this morning, and, and I think it kind of goes with what Brother Paul talked about um, in his testimony up here about recognizing who he is and uh, how much better he can be and how much growth he has left to do. And that last song that we just sang, that now I belong to Jesus. And I think those two things kind of to go hand in hand. Because um, I spent a lot of time just kind of thinking about how I've gotten here. And I kind of wanted to share that with you a little bit, along with, I guess, kind of just some other thoughts um, before we get into some scripture. Um, and I don't want it to be about me, but my life I can relate to and, and I think I can reflect from. And, and so that's, that's the heart that I'm coming with this morning, and I, I hope that you'll see that. Um, Because I grew up in a house that was not a Christian home. My mom, to the extent that she could, tried. Um, She would take us to church occasionally. Um, But my father is is not a believer. He believes that there is a God out there. Um, But I don't don't think he he wants to, to believe that Christ is also God, the Son, and that he needs him in his life to be saved because I've heard him often say that you know when I die I'll just kind of sit down from God and you know, across from God at the table and, and we'll we'll bargain all this out and he'll see I'm a good guy. Um, I think that kind of sums up his his thoughts and and so that's kind of what I came up under. And I was thinking this morning the importance of the husband leading a home and the influence that it has on his, the kids like Paul was talking about this morning, because that's the influence that I had in my life coming up. And even though when I was probably about Wyatt's age or so, Wyatt Terrence's age somewhere in there, mom sent us to a a summer camp, and they put out that gospel call, and I remember thinking, you know something? What if there is a God? And what if I haven't accepted him? You know, just to be on the safe side. I raised my hand and they took me aside and I said that prayer, but it wasn't true. It wasn't heartfelt. It wasn't genuine. It was erring on the side of caution. And and so I know it wasn't true, it wasn't genuine, it wasn't real. Um, I could not have considered myself saved at that point in time. And so I, I went through life having that regular thoughts and feelings that I did um, about the world you know, believing in the evolution that was being taught in the schools and whatnot, and live that life apart from Christ. Um, all through college, I had some really good friends that I know are good, solid Christians, and they were a huge influence in my life because even though I was rebelling against, maybe not to the extent that some do or that I could have, they loved me anyway. And they, sh- they, they started to show me what it meant to be a part of the church. And then when I moved to Harrison with my wife and being a part of that, that church back there, that was an influence in those two young girls' lives that gave their life to Christ last week, 
I started wanting it. I started desiring, I guess, to, to have Christ call me his, but I wasn't all the way, I don't think. Because I would pray those prayers, you know, Lord, yeah, I want you in my life. And I'd immediately turn and, and, and not want to live for him. I didn't recognize who I was. And it wasn't until October of 2009, it was actually that summer, um, working on the police department, uh, working night shifts, listening to radio stations. And I remember that the talk radio station, and they, were, they had folks on there talking about if, if you remember, you know, 2012, I think it was, was supposed to be the year that uh, the, the stars lined up in such a way that it formed a cross in the sky, and that was going to be the start of the end. And I don't remember that. what caused me to, to talk to Kevin about that. But he did, and he said, I want to show you something. Will you come with me? I said, sure. So right there in the police station, he went and he pulled the Bible off the shelf. Thank God there's still a Bible sitting in that police department down there. And he, he, he went back to Revelations and the great white throne judgment and when it's going to end and everything will start anew. And he offered up a challenge to me that day. He said, I'd like to, like to kind of take you in and, and disciple you and teach you about the Bible. Would you be willing to? And I think it was at that point in time when I truly yielded myself to Christ. And I said, you know something, I'm with summer, start of the college season, I, how about October? You know, and this is like July. I told him, how about October? He said, okay. And October 1 rolled around, and he came to me and said, are you ready? I'm like, yes, I am. And I know that there was a change in me at that point in time, because sitting down to read the Bible, it, it wasn't a struggle. I actually had a desire and a hunger for it. And even though I had been going to church, and we've heard testimony about that from folks up here before, Scott, you know, saying, you know, I've been in church all my life, but at some point in time coming to realize that it's not about going to church. It's about that personal relationship with Christ. And that's when things really started to change for me. Up to that point in time, um, I look back, and I say, you know something, that was the easy part. Living that life for myself and, and apart from Christ, that was the easy part. These last, I guess it's coming up on six years now, that's when the work began. That's when it's been hard. Um, to obey the Holy Spirit in your life and to step out in faith that's, that's, what di that's what's difficult. And that's what Kevin's been preaching about a lot from 1 Thessalonians, the way that we're supposed to be living our, our lives as those people that have given their life to Christ. That's when the work is starting to, to really work and, and take over because I would have never have thought that I'd be standing up here someday. This, if you would have asked me this 20 years ago, I would have told you you were stupid crazy. I never would have believed that I would get up and sing in front of people, at least not without being under the influence of a different type of spirit as opposed to the Holy Spirit. I never thought that I would be the father in my home that is seeking God and trying to take his children to God, trying to live that life that is something completely apart from what I thought I would be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have looked at the political and economic situations going on in the world with the rest assurance that I have now, knowing that that is the world, that is not of Christ. I wouldn't look at the creation around me. I would have been looking at the evolution. All of those things in my life, I can now see that they're out there. And it's a part of living for something bigger than you. It's not about me anymore. And I think kind of the phrase that I came up with, it's not about being the operator, it's about being the instrument. Because the operator is in control of something, and I'm in control of nothing. But being the instrument of God. And allowing the Holy Spirit in your life to lead you to do things that you never thought were possible. 
to put yourself out there, allow yourself to expand and to grow. And I've kind of been challenged a little bit this last week with some things that I've seen on Facebook and in the news. And the first one I saw was this video, and I, I opened it up because it was from our neighbor, Toby Sheets, and so I knew there was probably something good behind it. And, and when the video started, I didn't read any of the captions or anything, but when the video started, you see two boxes on the floor, and they rip the tops open. And all of these people start flooding towards those boxes. And I got to admit, immediately I went through my mind thinking, what are these people being so greedy about? So self-centered that they got to grab what's in there. And they were. They were grabbing it and they were clutching onto it and, and immediately scurrying away from the box. And I had those negative initial thoughts about it. And then I went back and I read what Toby posted. And above it she posted... I need to rethink how precious this book is. And then I read the caption of the video itself, and it said, a video of Christians in China opening their Bibles for the first time. And I reflected back on how we are as a society who has access and the ability to come together like we do on a daily basis free from persecution, free from, from having to worry about who knows it. And we don't act that way. These people were clutching the, the Bibles as though they had just received the greatest gift and every desire that their heart could ever want. And they were. And they were crying because they had the Word of God in their hands. Something that we take for granted here. And that challenged me about how we take our faith and how we're willing to step out and do things for Christ. And I think back to the number of times that I've sat in other churches where it starts to go kind of long in the message. And the pastor would say, I know, we're, I know we're getting long, but just another five minutes, bear with me. Like another five minutes of listening to or learning about God's word is a hindrance in my life. And so I appreciate the fact that Kevin is up here letting the spirit lead him and wearing the brand new carpet out up here as he's praying around and shouting and, and whatnot. Because I know that's the work of God in him. Or you think about those people that live in those countries that they have to stand up for Christ and say, yes, I believe. And knowing that doing that could mean their physical death. We don't face that here. And those are some, some pretty tough challenges from across the pond. But we have a few in our country that I think are setting the example. And I don't know all about, I think her name's Kim Davis. Just came in the news the last few days. She's a county clerk down in Kentucky who has stood up and said, you know something? This goes against what I know to be the true word of God. And I will not sign those marriage licenses. And we heard on this radio this morning, she just spent her fourth night in jail because of it. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to stand up? Because there's all those people out there right now and I'm reading about it. This isn't about faith. This is about you doing your job. It's more than about doing a job. And then there's the others who are saying, well, this is the law of the land. You have to obey your government. And it says in here that God will put in place over you those in authority and you're to, to submit to them. And I would say, yes, that is correct so long as it does not violate the word of God. And they're forgetting that. They're not standing up for those things that we need to be standing up for. See, I think all of those are example of what faith is. It's not about who you belong to as far as a church name or anything like that. It's about the faith and letting the Holy Spirit work in your life and following Christ. And that's what Kevin, again, is preaching about from 1 Thessalonians when he's talking about how to, where to live our life. 
and the fact that we're going to come under heavy persecution and trials and tribulations. And what did he talk about at that point in our life where we feel that we're almost ready to burst? And then sometimes it's going to go even further than that to where it's like that balloon that actually does burst. And we have to have that faith to be able to go through that because 1 Thessalonians is written to the Christian. It's not written to the world. And the Christian has something in his life that the world does not. And that is the Holy Spirit. And I had to kind of chew Kevin's butt the other day because the Holy Spirit led him to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I said, you know something? That's kind of one of the things I was going to talk about was the Holy Spirit and the works of the Holy Spirit in our life. What are you doing to me? You're, you're cutting the legs out from underneath me. He said, well, you go on, brother, and you talk about the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk this morning. I know that was kind of long already, but probably about halfway through anyway. I want to talk about, again, those five works of the Holy Spirit in our life and how we need to use those to get through that which is Kevin, that Kevin has been talking to us about, about. And one of the first works is that he regenerates us. This is he literally recreates us and gives us new life. I'm going to look real quick at a couple of verses. The first is in Titus 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Changing us. Second reference would be in 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 For if by any for if any be a hearer of the word and not a door he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was he is made anew they're regenerated and I think you've probably heard the, the saying that you can't see the forest for the trees because you're in it. And I've got to say that, that this is one of the things that, that I kind of struggled with because I couldn't see the renewing in myself because I, I'm in myself. And that flesh was battling with, with the spirit in there. But I had others that saw the change in me. And I thank them for, for bringing it forth to my wife, which she then conveyed to me. Or for, for others just coming right to me and, and change, seeing that they saw that change in me. That change that, that really helped confirm the fact that, you know something? I am a different man now. I have something in me that did that. It, it's not of my own work. I can't do that. That's the Holy Spirit in me. That Holy Spirit is what it is that's leading me be able to live out what Christ would have for us. Second work is that he baptizes. And I'm not talking about the baptism that we saw outside last week in the water, but he baptizes us into the body of Christ. He brings us together and he makes us that body that is the church. See, this building is not the church. It's the people sitting here. It's me and you and those that have accepted Christ and that have the Holy Spirit in them. That is the church. I'd look, uh, like to look at Romans 6.34. Not 6, 34, 6, 3 through 4. 
Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That being baptized together, being brought together. In 1 Corinthians 12, First Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. We are all a part of the body of Christ. And we are going through this walk, living for Christ together, and it takes all of us together to do that because we have to support and lift up one another and encourage one another. Friday, my brother Paul was encouraging to me in ways that I, I didn't know that I was being encouraged to him. But he saw something in my walk that I was doing that encouraged him. And so in turn, he, he encouraged me back. And there, there's that mutual, we need that in one another to be able to get through, to face those challenges of raising our kids. And that was a big part of what we talked about Friday. We didn't get into the Holy Spirit. We're just talking about that, that faith and our growth and, and how, do we, how do we raise our kids so that they'll know God and not do those things that we did. Not go the way that we did. We also know that one of the, a third work would be the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us um, he not only joins us to the Savior, but he joins himself to us. He comes in us and makes himself a part of us. While we're in 1 Corinthians here, if we could look at chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is God that we might know the things that are freely given to us. As well as, go over one more chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And every time I read this verse, I have to think back to the fact that in the Old Testament, the Jews had to go to a place go into this temple which they kept holy and clean to be in the presence of God. And we walk with Him every day. We don't have to go anywhere but to inside ourselves to have the Holy Spirit and God right inside of us. That we're that precious, that, that we are that temple. And that's a good reminder to always have as you're out there facing the challenges of life. And facing the challenges of that, that Satan would put in front of you, the sinful temptations that are out there, that when those things, those thoughts, those actions come into your life, you're desecrating the temple. You're desecrating yourself. And the Holy Spirit is then there with you. He's there so that he can guide us in that walk lead us in that right direction. You know, one of the things that Paul and Kevin and I were talking about on Friday morning was the fact that, you know something, even though maybe we weren't, hadn't given our lives to Christ yet, we still knew when we did stuff that was wrong. That conscious that's inside of us. And how much stronger is that now that you've given your life to Christ? You really know. If you really feel that conviction because he's inside of us. The fifth work, or fourth work, he seals. We are sealed by the Spirit himself. A lot of times this can be thought of as an earnest. I know Mom and Alan are purchasing a home, or in the, in the process of that. And we've, we've purchased a couple of them. And what, are the, what it's required, generally, when you make a purchase like that, you have to put down earnest money. And what is earnest money? But it, it's, it's that, that money that 
that you're giving up, guaranteeing not to get back, that you're going to follow through with this. Christ gives that Holy Spirit to us. He's, that is a down payment on our soul. And he's not giving it back. He's not going to take it back ever. It's a down payment for when we die so that we can go be with him. 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us in God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. And Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, uh, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchase possessed, until the praise of his glory. Until the redemption of of the purchase possessed. Mom and Alan have put down earnest money on that until they take possession of it. When we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in us and and he has put down something. God has a stake in your life now until he takes you into his full possession, which is very comforting, knowing the fact that every day that I try to live out those things that I talked about earlier about being that husband about being that that church member about putting myself out there uh, with others to encourage them on top of all the other sin that's in the world I stumble on a daily basis but I, I do so much more freely now it, it's, it's, it's easier because you know something I'm not trying to obtain perfection. All he wants us to do, I think, is to just try on a daily basis to go forward and do the best that we can. And you're going to struggle. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall short of the glory that he calls us to. But that stumble's okay because we're sealed. We've been bought. We don't have to worry about trying to obtain that perfection for him for, for the loss of his his love for the loss of his grace that long suffering that he has we can't lose that it's there always and the fifth work is fills and it's a little bit different than that indwells he's not only in us but he fills us and the one thing I remember from going over the doctrine of the Holy Spirit is that there's multiple times that when it refers to fills when you go back and look at the word and what it meant it was completely to that bursting over cannot stuff any more in it I think back when I was a kid we, we took our sheep down to some uh, neighbors folks who had more sheep than us and, and had them sheared and uh, they got me up in the wool sack stomping the wool we'd put three pelts in and push it down there and then they'd drop me in the gunny sack and I'd be down there just to stomp in my way trying to pack as much in there as we possibly can. Well, we've been packed full. Before I go further, I want to look at Acts 2. Acts 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled that day of Pentecost. They were filled full of the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking just last night about, I don't remember the passage in here, I don't remember if it was Paul or it was Peter, but they were out talking with folks. And they said, you know, have you been baptized? And they said, yes. Well, then, then you have the Holy Spirit. And they said, well, what is the Holy Spirit? 
So, well, what baptism did you have? Well, we had John's baptism. And they had the baptism of repentance. They hadn't been filled with the Holy Spirit. So they were talked about it. And guess what happened to them immediately? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is one of those that Kevin often talks about. Is this Holy Spirit we get in our life and we get in that gunny sack and we tamp it down and we stuff it into the cloak closet because we don't want it in our life. We're not willing to listen to it and let it lead us and, and open it up and turn it loose. And I think that's what today was about for me, if nothing else, trying to offer encouragement to all of you to do what I try to do, and that is listen to that Holy Spirit. Even in facing all of those challenges that we know that are going to come our way, and all those temptations, and all those trials, all those struggles that are going to come, the persecutions, which I think are going to become more and more for us even in this land. We have to follow and let that Holy Spirit out and let it lead us. And I think it's very easy for us to say, you know something, I can't do it. We're trying to be the operator. We need to remember that we are the instrument. That we can do all things through Christ. Some of us think that we're not, we don't have enough in us. You're filled, completely full. It doesn't matter. It can be Taryn or Wyatt or Victoria or Jack that can do amazing, amazing things. And I think, I know at least in our, in our upbringing, I remember as a child, um, probably around the boys' age, some of the first tractors that I was put on, a little Ford 8 in tractor. And we used that tractor for rake and hay because that's the implement that it could pull. And so I'd sit out there and I'd drive back and forth bouncing on my seat. And after a year or two, I, I got moved up to, to run on the baler. But that was a little bit bigger tractor. It was the old case with the crank on the front end of it. And I think, if anything, gave me a strong back in my life, it was that case. Because when you could start that tractor, you were a man. <laughs> Let me tell you. But the reason we used that tractor, not the Ford 8 in, is because it had the horsepower to do it. It had the horsepower to pull the, the baler that that little Ford 8 in just couldn't do. And so I kept moving my way up. And finally I was driving the big tractor, the big, tra the, the big Steiger that you know, pulled the 36-foot toolbar through our light. You know, I graduated and, and moved ourselves up. Well, guess what? When I was sitting on that Ford 8 in, if I want to look at that and what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives, I'm full of all, at that age, that, that little tractor, it would have been like that tractor being full of all the horsepower that that big Steiger could. The 200 and some horsepower in that little Ford 8 in. That's Taryn and Wyatt, Victoria, Jack, Kate, Allison, the Sap girls. When they accept Christ, they have all the horsepower they need. See, it's not about the size of the instrument. It's about the operator of the instrument. And when you're not the operator, you have God in control. You have God leading you. And all things are possible when God's in control and leading us. So I would just encourage you to open the closet door let the stuffing out and let it fill you completely room by room. Listen to the Holy Spirit in your life. Know that whatever God leads you to, God can lead you through. Through the power and the work of His Holy Spirit when we have that in our lives. Let's pray with me, please.